segment, one segment fonts for the video. Yeah, so you can see all the features in the video. Thank you guys uh, for coming to this meetup. Uh, my name is uh, Vijay Parvatikar. Yeah. I am the uh, founder, co-founder of uh, two meetup groups, uh, Video Streaming and Multimedia 
uh, meetup groups, and we actually have these events from time to time uh, to connect uh, organizations with, uh, you know, um, uh, people who are interested in the technology area. And uh, I, I really want to thank you for coming all the way here and attending this event. And I'm going to also uh, introduce uh, Mr. Dave, uh, Dave Datta. Uh, Dave Datta is, uh, uh, you know, key uh, uh, professional, uh, the video streaming professional who has worked in the area for the last uh, several years. Um, he was at Intel uh, doing uh, video encode, and now uh, he's into this uh, new company called Live Planet and also Video Point. And he's the city of this company, you know, spearheading efforts on, on building the video coin network. With that said, I'll just hand over to Dave Dutt. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just, uh, um, thank you. I'm just sharing it with our Telegram folks so that they can start seeing it. So uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Like today is a special day for us because this is the first time we're going to be doing a video coin testnet preview. Um, so in this case, we're showing um, literally for the first time what we've been working on, um, you know, like uh, we've been doing this for over two years now. And of course the video coin part we've been doing um, over the past eight months or so. Um, but yeah, the summary is, you know, like for the first time <laughs> we're showing a video coin test that preview. So um, a quick agenda for today is, you know, I'll do a quickish introduction to video coin and you no know, big uh, my spiel is usually longer, but I'll just do a quick one because it's a technical meetup. And uh, we'll go through an architecture overview, um, and then we'll do a testnet demo. Oh, that thing is a mute this thing. Because the live stream is echoing audio back. But we'll do a quick architecture overview, and then I'll jump into the testnet demo, and you know, hopefully it works. Uh, so video coin is pretty much decentralized video infrastructure. So all of us here, uh, we know what video infrastructure is. It's basically what enables all 80% of internet traffic, uh, which is video, to seamlessly hit from you know, like the source to the destination. And um, what we want to do is that video coin take the centralized existing video infrastructure platform and um, and enable decentralized applications on top of it. Um, so in, 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 in a quick summary, VideoCoin has four different types of miners. So we have storage miners, distribution miners, compute miners, and relay miners. Um, you'll, see the, uh, you'll see how each one of these uh, miners function in a decentralized capacity when we get into the architecture. But, um, but you know, we, storage miners essentially perform the function of, of uh, of a storage system. So like they store videos, and then for that, they earn video coin. Distribution miners perform the function of a CDN. Uh, so they do CDN function, and then they earn video coin for that. Um, compute miners perform encoding, transcoding, and any uh, complex video playlist operations, and they earn video coins for that. Um, and relay miners are something very unique that we have um, uh, implemented. It acts as a bridge between existing centralized systems and decentralized systems. Uh, the reason we do that is we realize that you know, like not everybody is ready to just jump on um, and implement uh, a decentralized video infrastructure platform because it is a pretty com extremely complex problem. And then uh, there is a lot of centralized infrastructure that we can use um, in video coin. So relay miners basically act as a bridge between video coin and existing compute, existing storage. So let's say if you're a relay miner, you're pretty much taking your Google, Google Compute storage, uh, Google Compute, uh, uh, you know, CPUs, and then relaying it on to the video coin network. So these are the four uh, different types of miners. And the quick why video is, you know, like video is responsible for over 80% of all internet traffic, uh, which means that um, not just us, but a lot of people want to do video, video streaming on the internet. So it's a huge market. And it is a huge, um, it's a huge problem that we want to solve. So overall, um, the the genesis of video coin actually the idea itself came uh, because of the camera that you guys are seeing here. So those in the live stream, uh, you can see a camera to your left. 
Um, so that is the live planet camera. It is uh, 3D stereoscopic, 4K, um, real-time stitching, 30 frames per second, top of the line, the best um, VR camera that you can pretty much buy in the market right now. Because in the form factor um, of where it fits on the palm of my hand, um, the camera can do stitching, streaming, everything in that. Um, in, in that. And when you stream uh, from this camera to the internet, it streams at 50 megabits per second. So that's like really, really, um, uh, you know, like pretty, you need really fat pipes actually. Even sometimes, even uh, our one gigabit line here um, in, our, in our office sometimes peaks out and, and will not be able to um, support a camera of, of, of that much bandwidth. Again, because when people look at internet bandwidth, it's, they always measure peak bandwidth and, and average bandwidth is always, you know, way low. So uh, imagine taking something so uh, bandwidth intensive and then streaming it on to, um, you know, like a LTE connection, which is five or six Mbps. It's almost impossible. So the innovation we made in the cloud, in Live Planet Cloud is uh, we took uh, the stream from this camera. We do something called as viewporting. Uh, we spin off hundreds of distributed uh, encoding instances at the same time that run and do the transcoding. And we optimize the stream by up to 83%, um, make it actually streamable at 6 Mbps. So the side effect of that was, when we were doing that, the cost of our Google Cloud Compute um, skyrocketed, because obviously we do all of this encode in distributed fashion and stream it uh, to, um, to folks, right? Like it, it's extremely expensive. So what we did, um, uh, you know, this was a problem. We, we saw that our internet, uh, our uh, video infrastructure costs are skyrocketing, and um, uh, at the same time, I probably have a yeah, I probably have a slide for this. At the same time, you know, like nearly 60% uh, of all data center capacity goes unused. Um, Google and um, Facebook and folks like that, they know exactly how to run their data centers. So they, you know, like they do spot instances and they do they do a lot of magic and then keep their data centers lit up and operational. But the world is filled with uh, a privately operated data centers, which you know, like pretty much uh, waste a lot of money and capacity. Like literally thirty billion dollars of um, waste capital is wasted every day trying to get um, just keep data centers on. So we thought, okay, eighty percent of internet is uh, video. 60% of data centers are wasted. So we, we thought we put them together, incentivize data center operators on anybody who has ex excessive computing power to actually use the, um, to put out their um, existing excess com compute capacity uh, for video streaming. And then we put a blockchain layer on top of, up top of it for incentivizing those who put uh, infrastructure out. So you know, overall, by doing this, like I said, we'd be able to um, lower costs by 50 to 80 percent. It's because let's say you're a data center sitting there doing nothing. Uh, if you give them a way uh, to monetize it, um, the actual cost to end consumers will be dramatically less. Um, anyway, these are all um, uh, covered in depth on our website. You guys can check it out. I'm not going to go. Um, like I said, it's a quickish introduction. Um, so live streaming is just the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with live streaming um, because uh, ironically, in, in when you're building live streaming, we've always been told uh, as video media professionals is hard, right? Uh, ironically, in the in the blockchain world, doing live streaming is easier than doing VOD. So we're going to start off with live stream, and then as a subset of it, we'll do VOD uh, because once we get live stream up and running, which is the hardest everywhere. Um, the blockchain layer needs another uh, another layer of storage mechanism. It's actually kind of harder, uh, so we need to build that, uh, and then uh, uh, we'll do that next. So Live Planet, these cameras, uh, which is streaming right now, um, will be one of the first applications on VideoCoin Network. Uh, I'll show you a testnet demo right now, which actually will use one of our cameras. So, um, what? So what I was getting at is like these are all sample applications that we are building and will launch along with uh, mainnet launch, not not anytime with beta or with alpha, but like basically what this means is that we'll we'll ship applications that anybody can just drag and drop on top of VideoCoin, and let's say create their own video, uh, create create their own YouTube, create their own 
um, you know, like podcasting, video, video casting network, and stuff like that. But um, the yeah, I think we're pretty excited to get started off with live streaming, which is the hardest problem, and then build other things on top of it. So now we get to the technical part, the architecture. So in a typical live streaming architecture, I mean, this is you know, you'd have an RTMP or an RTSP source ingesting into a uh, ingest node that would be taking all um, uh, the stream that's coming in, convert it into chunks, and there'd be a transcode node that would do the transcoding, and that would push to the HLS, and a client would play it. Um, this is typical live streaming architecture that you would see today. Of course, like this is you know like taking off all complexity and simplifying it into you know five different blocks. Um, the main thing that we need to realize in a, in a in present day infrastructure is all of these nodes are what we call trusted, right? Like all of these nodes, we know that if we run our code on it, of course, if, uh, if there's malicious operators, et cetera, so those are all corner cases, but if you run your code on these nodes, let's say you buy a AWS instance or a Google Cloud instance, you know that the, if you run LS, you know that the output of LS is actually real. You, you can't trust those nodes. So the same thing with every single node in the video streaming pipe is trusted. When you're trying something in a decentralized world, it's all different, right? You just have a trust problem now. You don't trust any single node because like, you don't know if they're like <coughs> transporting properly, you don't know that they're creating streams properly. It's an absolute nightmare in terms of uh, uh, rogue operators who just are there with, um, um, you know, like all the Byzantine false tolerance and, and, and research that goes on. It's basically, to figure out how to, in a decentralized world where there's no control and there's no structure, how do you get around the trust problem? And it's actually a much bigger problem when you do distributed encoding, because let's say if you're, if you're doing small streams, it's okay, but if you try to do bigger 4K streams, there's no way you can stream um, through one instance. You need multiple instances, and you need, uh, um, and you need to sync all of those instances. And that brings us to a trust and a synchronization problem. So like when you're doing a decentralized streaming network like VideoCoin, it, it just like, it's a huge bunch of um, algorithmic and, and synchronization problems that are brought on that, that weren't seen previously. So that brings us to our architecture choices and why we've made the choices that we've made as we build VideoCoin, right? So what we do is we replace trust with proofs. And that is how um, overall um, the, the blockchain revolution is pretty much powerless. Uh, you don't have to trust a node. As long as you can prove that the work that the node did is real, then we're good. So the same uh, architecture diagram we saw, uh, you know, where the ingest node would, instead of doing just a blind streaming, it would now become a wallet node, which means that it, it now owns a whole bunch of video coins, um, and it is promising uh, through a smart contract to the compute miners or the infrastructure providers that it would make a payment based on a smart contract, based on a work that it sets, um, which, which pre-agrees to using an algorithm. Same thing happens uh, to compute miners. So the compute miners are doing work uh, with a preset guarantee through a smart contract that if they can do provably right work, then they'll get paid for it. Um, and the same thing with storage miners. So like the storage miners, if they can provably distribute their videos, then they get paid for it. So that is the overall um, uh, philosophical and architectural choice that you have to make when you're go going into decentralized systems that um, all trust is replaced with proofs. And in our case, we've come up with something called as proof of transcoding. So uh, in this net, in this uh, network diagram, right? Like, um, and then the proof here is mainly established by what we call as a verifier node. So, verifier node is um, is um, something that operates in the network that maintains network consensus by staking video coins into the network. What it does is it um, it it is telling the network algorithmically, of course, that I will keep network consensus, um, and here's X number of video coins that I'm uh, staking into the network as a guarantee that I'll not misbehave. 
and the VideoCon network will have you know, X number of verifier nodes. Uh, we're modeling all of those mathematically. Uh, X number of video uh, verifier nodes, that will keep up network consensus. So in this case, the verifier node um, pretty much looks at what the source is doing, looks at what the miner is doing, and then it's the arbitrator of the truth where both the source and the um, uh, miner will provide proofs and then the verifier node will establish whether the proof is right or wrong and, and uh, act as an escrow for payments between, between the nodes. Um, again, this is, I'm oversimplifying all of this, but it is in depth in the white paper. And also there's like, not just me, but like there's a whole bunch of projects, all of them trying to figure out how to uh, solve the proof of stake problem, um, basically because it is the, um, one of the only ways to scale the blockchain up uh, to do high compute, high, high throughput, low latency, compute light videos. Um, so just remember that we're replacing trust, proofs with trust, pr trust with proof. And that brings us to proof of transcoding. So proof of transcoding is the fundamental way we establish proof in, in the video coin network. Um, I recently wrote a long blog post about this, but uh, this is actually an image of, the, of, of, of Crater Lake that we took from one of these cameras that you see here. Um, the Crater Lake image, um, it's actually full on video. So what, what's happening here is you take the source and then let's say the um, transcoded destination is what you see to the right, uh, to the top. So we can algorithmically using something called as a p-hash, perceptual hash, establish uh, the perceptual hash is pretty much based on a, on a DCT function, uh, which calculates the DCT of both the source and destination and then it, it, it very accurately can tell whether the source and destination are similar. Um, so you know, the source here on the left um, and the destination on the right, on the top, is actually proper output. And the p-hash distance, um, these calculations, you can get more details in my blog post, but the p-hash distance here is less than 10, which means that they are similar. Um, and the source and the destination below in the, in the, in the, in the right that almost looks the same, but I've just run a Gaussian, Gaussian blur and run a pixelation on it. It's pretty much the same video. To the human eye, it's actually, it's a, uh, from a distance, it looks the same. However, the p-hash algorithm can catch it, and then the hash distance exceeds 10. So this proof of transcoding is what the verifier nodes use to keep network consensus. And then the verifier nodes themselves keep network cons uh, consensus among them through a voting mechanism to proof of stake. Um, so we've done a lot of analysis on top of proof of transcoding itself. We've, um, we've, we've done analysis and, and seen how the hash distances vary over bitrate. Um, we've done how hash distances change over codec. Um, and we've also checked how hash distances change over bitrate and resolution. So overall, um, we've got pretty promising results. And only in case of dramatic bitrate and resolution changes, let's say you take a 4K video and blur it and, and shrink it all the way to down to 640p or 360p, then you start seeing hash distances above 10, which is like almost not a real use case. Um, but in that case, we have a special case where we can go and look into the bitstream and then still establish whether the proof of work or was successful or not. So the beautiful thing about a perceptual hash-based proof of transcoding is that um, it is based on these analysis. It's bitrate independent, codec independent, resolution independent, right? So that, that covers majority of the problems we have in, in, uh, in video proof. Um, and like I said, verifier nodes maintain consensus in the network and proof of stake within the verifier nodes make sure that the verifier nodes do not misbehave. Um, that you know brings us to the video coin testnet, and uh, the overview for. So I'm going to show a demo, and uh, I'm going to switch on to that that part now. But overall, the way we have approached we have approached the video coin problem is um, you know there are a lot of great engineers and a lot of great open open source projects going on in the in the blockchain space, and then I think one obviously the most beloved one for us is Ethereum because of the maturity of the project the developer ecosystem, the amount of research that has gone in, and also just proven in, in the real world that 
Ethereum can handle um, uh, crazy amounts of transactions, and all of them are real transactions. So overall, um, as as a as a company, we're really uh, fond of Ethereum and the way it works. So we built um, this is something that we've, we've been saying for a long time. So we built VideoCoin on top of Ethereum. So again, the main distinction is it's not an ERC20 token. So it's a native token. We've literally ripped off parts of the um, uh, Ethereum network that we do not require. We've kept the P lib P2P. We've kept the databases level DB, and we've kept the uh, we've kept the uh, way the network topology etc. is maintained. And uh, Ethereum itself does a whole really good job with keeping the um, uh, proof of authority running, and then overall the network runs. So we've kept those parts. Uh, we've gotten rid of the proof of work because Ethereum's proof of work makes no sense to us um, because it's built for um, a completely different type of use case where you know you want to run small smart contracts and solidity and stuff like that. Um, so we've taken that off. Right now, our smart contracts run uh, on solidity, but we're working on a, a more generic LLVM-based port where we could take um, that is that is not ready yet, but like where we could take um, language agnostic code, cross compile it using LLVM, and run it on our um, uh, clone of Ethereum VM. So EVM has a, a limited set of um, uh, bytecodes it supports for solidity based contracts, but we're taking that and extra extending it to video and video based contracts. Uh, that is still work in progress, but we've gotten rid of. Uh, We've gotten rid of those parts. Um, and we're also building an API on top of the Web3. So like basically, um, all the API, all the chatter that happens between the miners and the verifier nodes to establish how the, how the uh, uh, live streaming and transcoding needs to be done is done through uh, an API we've built on top of Web3. And obviously, um, all transcoding is built on top of FFmpeg. Um, FFmpeg is used heavily throughout the system, and all our ingest nodes and um, uh, uh, like all the RTMP is built on top of Nginx RTMP. So again, these are all things that uh, we previously built for our live planet cameras. So our live planet camera is, is has a whole bunch of open source software that we use, um, and we, we've translated all our learnings. Um, from Live Planner in while we're building this. And of course, this is just a caveat here. We're still at the testnet phase. We're, uh, we're not even at the beta. We're at the testnet phase. While we get to beta, that keep adding more and more functions. And and to quickly summarize, um, we're still using proof of authority. In this case, um, the nodes, the, they don't do any mining. Basically, proof of authority means they don't mine. They just seal transactions that come in, and then they seal transactions based on authority and not based on any mining function. So that brings me to the demo. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see my terminal. So what I do is, where am I? So what I'm doing right now is pretty much bringing up our Ethereum network, which is based on GIT. This is our, this is this is basically a video coin network. Uh, it's bringing up our blockchain, um, so that thing's up and running. So like, uh, as we build out our uh, software, we're always focused on making sure that it works in the enterprise. So uh, we're making sure where everything's containerized and built on top of Docker. So um, we have our uh, So that, that shows us our block explorer. So this is a 
Yeah, so this is our block explorer. So this is kind of grainy, especially for the people on the live stream. I'll create a different screen screencast and share it with them. But, but you'll see here that we have five different video coin nodes here. Um, these are five different nodes. Um, here, node zero and node one are sealers. So they just basically seal um, any transactions that come in, uh, but they're network peer-to-peer -peer through lib P2P. And uh, as you can see, like, you know, like uh, in uh, node three and four, I believe, are minors. So I'll configure the minors now. But node three and four are minors. And um, you, know, you can see, dig into each of these nodes, and then you'll see uh, network statistics, transaction statistics, and what kind of blocks that they're working on, um, and all the details here. Let's see. So this is a block explorer. Okay, and then what we'll do next is uh, we'll go and bring up our miners. So I'm pretty much starting up uh, the mining nodes right now. So like the, uh, the video coin mining nodes that I talked about, like all the light wallet nodes, nodes three and four are up now and uh, listening for transcoding. So what I'll do next is um, start the verifier node. And all right. So this has brought up the verifier node. So now, you know, if we go, go back to the network, uh, if we go back to the block explorer that we had, so this now network is now fully up and running. So like we had the we had the sealer nodes up and running, and then these are the minor nodes. Those two are up and running. You can see the transactions and the video coin um, balance on each one of these. It's all zero because there's, the network's up and running and waiting for things to happen. So now what I'll do is like something really brave. I'll take a 4K stream from our camera and try to. Uh, stream it into this um, video coin testnet that's running on, presently running on Google Cloud. So let me bring up our camera. So again, like, you'll also get to see um, our camera's cool interface. I need to go to Google Cloud. So you see this, right? So this is our cool camera, which is, uh, which you can basically see the fully stitched 4K stream uh, in real time, where you can see I'm waving right here, and you can see me there, right? And it's uh, um, uh, in 3D, the, the, the top and bottom images you can see there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to stream to our, the video coin testnet that we just now created. All right, so now I've done something super brave. This is a full-on 4K stream. So let's see if it works. If not, we just pull down the resolution a bit and then try again. But, all right, let's see. All right, success. You see this, right? Uh, what you're seeing here, these are all the, um, the actual transactions going on here, verifying node, and it's showing the actual hash distances between the source and the destination of the video that, that was played. So let's go back to the block explorer and see what's happening there. All right, success. So right now I'm streaming a full on 4K stream through a video contestant and you can see that the balances were all zero. It's all shot up, right, like four and five because video coin node three and four are actual miners. 
and uh, uh, and the verifier node is sealing transactions and issuing video coin tokens for all successful uh, HLS chunks that have been screened. So obviously, I need to show you guys that this whole thing is working. So I'm going to pull the stream from um, Google Cloud instance. Um, you know, this is the instance. All right, it works. Yay! This is coming off. This is coming off the Google Cloud instance. So you can see this, right? Yeah. Um, the you see the IP address. It's kind of hard for all these guys on the live stream to see this. I'll create another stream for you, but you see this is directly coming from the Google Cloud instance, and it is live. You could see me walking there, right? So let's see what's happening in the Block Explorer again. And you see again, like each time there is a successful transaction, and this transaction was basically between a p-hash calculation that we discussed, right? Like it takes the source, takes the destination, calculates the p-hash, and if it is a success, issues the transaction. You can see transactions rolling here. And then the video coin nodes increasing their um, video coins as a, as a result of that. So, yeah, that's our demo. You know, like we're uh, we're very excited to have hit this milestone of uh, of our first testnet launch. And uh, for those guys on the live stream, I'll create a better screenshotted, you know, like one where you can see all of this. But you know, that brings us to the end of this. Except, I think I have a slide on what we're doing next. So maybe I should talk about that just a bit and then we should be done. Yeah, so I think what we're doing next is basically doing the wallet nodes uh, where um, you know you can just install um, a wallet node, put in a bunch of video coins in it, and then you can start your RTMP stream through that. And all the compute miner Docker images that we're working on, we want to put make that public. Uh, we're working on RTMP endpoints configurations right now. Um, there were only three different bit streams that the, the network was putting out. It based on pre-existing configurations. Those we are ex extending through APIs. Uh, we're adding more streaming destination APIs. So instead of doing just um, we, we can do RTMP forward. Instead of doing RTMP to HLS, we can do RTMP forward, HLS forward. RDMP to impact dash, and so on and so forth. And also POA certificate management. You know, like we want to manage um, those who want to uh, start mining video coin with us. Uh, we want to manage our certificate and you know, be the certificate authority for until we have our full on proof of stake implementation done. So I think uh, that brings us to the end. Thanks a lot for joining us. And then, uh, <laughs> question. Yeah, questions. How do you verify verifier nodes? <laughs> yes, that's what we're talking about. Right? <laughs> so verifier nodes themselves maintain um, um, a quorum using what we call proof of stake. So like they stake video coins. So let's say you, uh, they, somebody says, I'm going to stake 100,000 video coins into the network and say that I'm not going to misbehave. So the other verifier nodes in the pool will check the verifier nodes work. So in this case, I just had I brought up just one verifier node, right? So in reality, there'd be like hundreds of verifier nodes, which would check each other's work, and that they vote on ev uh, on every transaction whether the work was right or wrong. If it was wrong, then the verifier node that staked all the coins would be kicked out, and all the coins that it would had staked would be burned. So like, let's say you bought all of this video coin, um, staked it, thinking that you're going to be a miner, and then uh, if the verifier node misbehaves, then it's gone and you lose. What's the incentive for a verifier node? So verifier nodes get to write the blocks, so they get block rewards. So it's uh, it's like free free video coins. It must be a higher stake than just being any other node, right? Yeah, yeah. So they get to write the blocks. The miners uh, get the mining rewards. Don't, they don't get to write the blocks. How much money do they do they actually get? <laughs> <laughs> In the end. In the end. Yeah. yeah. You know, it brings the uh, uh, incentive. Yeah. Um, so the. Minor, the minor incentives are based on the complexity of the work that they do. So, like let's say they, in this case, I did a 4K to uh, 4K to uh, 1080p trans, uh, transcode. So that they would earn more more money. Uh, so those we're running uh, the math simulations on that. Um, but the amount of money that video coin miners would earn is always more than what uh, a verifier node would earn 
However, a verifier node would have easier work because mm -hmm. it's easy for it to write blocks and then verify other verifier nodes work. Um, but the barrier to enter there is much higher, right? Like you need to have all this video coin and access to all of this video coin to even become a verifier node. So um, the barrier to enter is there higher. Once you enter, it's easier for you to um, earn video coins for every verifier node. Does the platform set the uh, value of Correct. The functions? So like, right. right. So that's what we're trying to we're trying to establish that either through an uh, an off blockchain gossip chatter, sorry, off blockchain gossip protocol. Uh, that is what it basically means is like it's just like an off blockchain market where the buyers and sellers just agree upon what they yeah. what before they make set the smart contract. Like they an auction do, system or something. Right, something like that. They do off blockchain agree and then write the transaction in. Pretty cool. Do you have a question from Ravi on the on the live stream? Um, what about geo restrictions on stream? Uh, so that's 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 a very uh, very interesting and tricky problem for us to solve. Uh, solve. Um, it uh, we, as of now our approach to that is to leave um, the smart contract writers to figure out how to restrict it because like you can geo restrict based on IP addresses and based on who's pulling the e streams. So I think as of now our plan is to expose the capacities in the API and let the developers do. So why uh, strategy of live first and then what? Why not? It would have been easy the other way, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. The thing is, with uh, if you do VOD first, you have to store video first. The storing is really hard because you now you have another layer of um, missed you know, like availability, rogue, be rogue behavior, yeah, availability. Because like now we're trying to solve rogue behavior on compute layer. Right. Um, before we solve the low rogue behavior on storage, storage layer. Yeah. And there are other projects that are trying to solve that. Some uh, very well-funded projects, I won't, I don't want to name them. But like for example, Siacoin has done a great job um, solving that problem. So if at the end of, after we've solved the live streaming problem, we may just take up Sia and then um, use their storage layer because, because they've done, you know, like, like I said, the, the the good thing about being in an open source project and in the open source world is you can use other people's great work and then contribute back to the community, right? So the storage problem, other people have solved it and other people are solving it. Nobody solved the video live streaming problem, so we want to solve that. Cool, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you joining us. And thank you for being in the Yeah, he looks good. Yeah, I don't look like, uh, you know, like... Uh, <laughs>